Hey, Spit Wads. It has been uh, it's been a crazy week here at the Ballers headquarters as headquarters as we have been without our fearless leader and host Andy and Holloway. Grandfather, <laughs> Grand, yes, Grandfather Andy. Uh, he's been tending to his family, taking care of his kids. Unfortunately, one of them came down with COVID, so that has been uh, a situation that we've been trying to move and shake and figure out how do we keep things going. So, uh, so we're gonna hit you this week with a spit hit. We will be back next week with a with a brand new fresh episode. But Al Borland, I'm, I'm he picked something special. Here. I am guaranteeing that this episode will be fantastic. And Probably will, the best one you've listened. You to will laugh your butt off in your life. <laughs> so enjoy the show. Spitwads, the holidays are just around the corner. Are you looking for a perfect gift for your loved ones? Look, we know, like we were reminded more than ever. You know, family memories. These things are important and what a better way to share a memory than with a photograph but the old busted photographs jason oh those don't work anymore i had to pick one not anymore not mm. with skylight frames skylight frame it's a it's a photo frame and you can update it instantly by email from anywhere it's a great way to feel close to those you love even when you're separated sets up effortlessly in under 60 seconds you just plug it in use the touch screen you connect to the wireless network and enjoy i just got a skylight frame it's fantastic man like i digital frames they've been around for a while and, and but, it was a good concept but that execution yeah they never we weren't ready the world wasn't ready the tech wasn't ready and it is now with the skylight frames uh, check them out. They have a hundred percent satisfaction guaranteed. If you don't love it, they're going to give you a full refund because they trusted their product. Now is a special offer. You can get ten dollars off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter the code Ballers. That's right, ten dollars off your purchase of a Skylight Skylight Frame. Just go to skylightframe.com, code Ballers. That's s k y l i g h t f r a m e dot com. Promo code Ballers. What happens when three buffoons give life advice, explore unrealistic situations, and give random topics more thought than they probably deserve? It's the Spitballers Podcast with Andy, Mike, and Jason. Bet baby to do. I can't even come in after that, Jason. How do you say that? Yeah, how can you follow up greatness like that, Mike? Oh. Hey, great idea, guys. Let's do a group <laughs> scat for episode 100. You got And I'll Jason. just tank it right in the middle. <laughs> yeah. It was all a trick on you, Mike. <laughs> Try to come in after this. I was going to say, we really, Jason needed to be the caboose to that scat. <laughs> Oh. That was, poor Mike. Lesson poor Mike. learned. <laughs> yeah. Show 200. Oh, Show yeah. 200. We, we'll, we'll get uh, a try again 100 episodes from now. Welcome into the Spitballers podcast, <laughs> Andy, Mike, and Jason, episode 100. <laughs> Woo! Oh, we did it. We did it. Can you believe it, Al? Can you believe it? Al Borland with us. I never had any doubts we'd make it. No, <laughs> no. I don't know if we did. I don't know if we really made it. We certainly recorded 100 episodes, but uh, this is a special, special episode for the Spitwads out there. First of all, thank you so much for supporting this show. It is, uh, it's been a wild ride. It's been a lot of fun to see how much joy this random uh, assortment of dad jokes has brought you on a regular basis. And uh, thank you for supporting the pod. Thank you for all of the great ideas leading to amazing drafts and segments. It's been a blast, right? I mean, this has been It's, it's been, been something. It's been it's something. It's been a lot of fun. I mean, look, when we when we took home, you know, the podcast awards best comedy show in the first year of existence. That's true. I would say we did something here. I didn't even know that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. You're so humble. Um, but yeah, we are the funniest show of all time. So, we want to remind you of that. Remind you of that cuz today's episode is very special. Like I said, we have a brand new draft. It's called Honey, I Shrunk the Draft. You'll find out what that means. Oh, gosh. At it's the end be of this episode. I it's going to be difficult. I am nervous. But you'll, you'll find that out momentarily. But first, I want to remind you, you can find us on Twitter, at SpitballersPod. Appreciate you following us over there. And on Instagram, Instagram.com slash SpitballersPod. 
all of the Spitwad supporting the show. We appreciate you. And everybody who's left a review, thank you. They are wonderful. They uh, they brighten my day every time I see somebody that is having a good time with the show. So today mm. we're gonna we're gonna give you the highlights of a hundred episodes. And this is not some uh, we just randomly pick one here or there. I mean, Al Borland went to town on this. He's been working on this for weeks. So he's picked out uh, some of the. Well, first he, you asked the spitwads out there, did you not, Al? Yeah, we uh, turned to the listeners and said, hey, what are some of your favorite moments in in Spitballer's history? And the ones that got the most responses, we made a little montage for you. Yeah, so basically they picked them. Yeah, so if you don't like it, it's yeah, it's really your fault. That's all on you, man. So we've got some of our uh, favorite moments from the last 100 episodes. And then stay tuned for right after that, we're going to get into a brand new draft on today's show. I am I am looking feverishly around my room. <laughs> so am I <laughs> now trying to think for, for this draft. draft. I'm like, okay. oh no, oh no, I'm not prepared. This is gonna be this is gonna be amazing. All right, let's jump right into the highlights, and we're gonna kick it off with uh, our first scat ever. What happens when three buffoons give life advice, explore unrealistic situations, and give random topics more thought than they probably deserve? It's the Spitballers Podcast with Andy, Mike, and Jason. I love. I feel like Mike went from uh, just a massive opposition of what was happening to like I got to get in. Uh, I got to get in, and he saved us because ours he were sure terrible. Did. And then he's like, "All right, let the music uh, man bang, in clean here. up, <laughs> <laughs> clean up, oh, clean up." They call the heavy hitters for the riff. What's funny is I was in my, in my head. Uh, I was doing that, and then when you. When I've you been doing ver- that for weeks, man. When you verbalized it, oh, I just let the cat out the bag. <laughs> it's a it's a hot tune. It is. Mike laid down the track, and uh, we 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 be- ruined it. <laughs> uh, no, man, I I missed out not having you guys in on the studio. There. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I feel like I have joined the worst. Oh, because we have. I don't know if you've noticed. There's a movement that has replaced the vegans and the cross. Oh, and it's the keto. It's the keto people, and I am firmly on. I feel like I am a part of it. Explain what keto is so, to those unaware of of your actions. And, so, and, and just to interject, because of what Mike's saying, it's true. No one out there does not know what keto is. Because <laughs> if you keto, you talk. First oh, rule gosh. of keto is you talk about keto. Go on, Mike. It's the ketogenic. It's like vegan. It's a diet. Where it essentially, except it's the exact opposite of vegan. Well, I'm just saying. I think it's, vegans would argue it's not a diet. Vegans would argue it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Well, uh, keto is a bit of a lifestyle right, too. I don't to know us. if you know this, but <laughs> the the breaking it down is essentially it's a zero or very low carb and higher fat style of diet. So you That's- should have been instantly going after the slow fat ones. Yeah, you're what keto, were you thinking? man. You're keto. You need that high oh, fat. Man. You got to get the high fat. Oh, my ketones would have been off the charts. Yeah. Human <laughs> avocados? Human, human induced ketones. <laughs> Did you call them human avocados? <laughs> Did you just refer to fat people as human <laughs> avocados? <laughs> I thought that one might have snuck through. <laughs> Not letting that one go. I feel like you just called me an avocado, which. I don't know. I guess I'm not too for the disappointed record, with. For the record, you're, it would be more of a bag of avocados. <laughs> Thanks, bud. So this is a simple one. It's been asked a plenty, but I want to know from you guys, what would you do? A genie has uh, emerged from wherever. Where uh, where do you I, even find I, genies these days? The I'm not, lamp. You, la- I think where do you find pl- those lamps? lamps plus. Oh. You have to go to Lamps Plus, and you gotta you got a lot of work to do. A lot, a lot of, of lamps in there. A lot of rubbing. You got to find the right one, but mm-hmm. it appears we found it. Yes. And what do we do? I, I'll start. I'll start us off with my first wish because I know it. I'm like so confident. Something you've thought about. Well, something it, I've thought about before. It, it, before you launch into it, it, there's really the two questions you have to ask yourself. I've got the three wishes. Am I going personal gain, mm-hmm. or am I helping out humankind? Right, and I 
think that there's other forks in the road there, but I'm going with the with the ladder, I believe. Of helping humans? Of helping humans and what I, I would do. I think he said a ladder. So your first <laughs> I'm going to the first top, wish is a ladder. No, dang it. Did I just lose a wish? You, you lost did. the wish. I didn't say I so wish. You, you have a ladder. Now oh. what else do you have with your last oh, two wishes? Oh man. Now I feel it like I can't be a big one though. <laughs> the biggest ladder that ever was. Well, it better. If this was one of my wishes, I it, <laughs> I'm asking for the Guinness Book of World Records ladder. Mostly so I could sell because I Here's a little thing I found out about myself. <laughs> You're going to use a genie to sell ladders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my plans are foolproof. Let's pull this back for a second, and I want to focus on the realities of the situation. Jason has used two wishes, and he's in a room, and he has a ladder, and there's no sweet potatoes left in the world. That is where we're at. A ladder, no sweet potatoes. And are you sitting there going, man, that's that was a great use of two wishes. And so now far, so got, good. So far, so good. And then for my third wish, mm -hmm. I want one hundred. I'm going to wish for $100,000. <laughs> What? $100,000. That's right. I know I can wish for a whole lot more. People will get suspicious, though. Yeah. I'm going to have Taxes. To, I'm going to have... You know how hard it is to launder a billion dollars? <laughs> Do you I'm, have to launder it if it's cash? <laughs> I don't know if it's from a genie. Are you asking for a check uh, no, from no, the genie? I'm, I definitely want yeah, that's, cash. You can't go... You have to get unmarked bills. You need yes. Bitcoin. I'm going to say... I'm going to say... Well, it's a little too volatile... Right now, I'm going to ask the genie for, for 100 a, grand. a briefcase <laughs> full of cash for $100,000. And you'll have at least three, dollars $400 more coming in with the ladder. I won't. Yes, it, it's a really nice ladder. I think upwards of $500. So $100,500, and I have rid the world of sweet potatoes. You're welcome. What is what's the worst? Oh, that's another the one. worst show you've man. had to endure from the kids. Oh man, there's. So I know the many. list is huge. Is oh, so what's many. the bald little boy? Oh, freaking Caillou! <laughs> Caillou is the worst. That annoying little and the well, he's bald. He's like six years old in this show. Why is he bald? Oh my gosh, I hate Caillou. <laughs> If you couldn't tell, oh yeah, that's oh. you. Man, you hit a home run there, Caillou. Uh, he does. He is. He's. He's full Charlie Brown. In Mike, it. He Mike is with the a hair. Whiny. How does baby. one spell Caillou? K A. No, no, no. no. C, C A I L L O U. Oh, okay. exactly. Caillou. Just look at how he spells. He's no, the, the thing about his name. His name is Caillou. That's the Prius of kids shows. Oh, he's gonna grow up and drive a Prius if they still existed. Wow, so Caillou has eyebrows. He just has no hair. Yeah, he's he's bald. They shave gotcha. his head. His parents and all shave his, his friends. Head. I'm looking at his friends. They all have hair. Watch one episode to see over under fifty times whiny baby stuff come out of that kid's mouth. Mm. And it's supposed to be like this calm, like okay, one of those. Yeah, oh, one of those. it's just a whiny baby. Yeah. <laughs> what? Wow. Uh, so there's a. Um, there's a chain of people that have asked the question, does... Because I was worried about this when you went off on the baldness. Does oh, he have a... No. Does he have cancer? So oh. people have searched... Oh, goodness. Does Caillou have cancer? And here's the here's the response. If you're not familiar... Phil, if you are not familiar, you lucky person, Caillou is a despicable, spineless four-year-old boy who cannot do anything. He can't grow hair, not because he has <laughs> cancer or progeria, but because he sucks. <laughs> and even his own body recognizes... <laughs> That he does not deserve hair or oh. food or love. <laughs> yes! Get bodied, Caillou! Oh. So, so that is the... Uh, if you if you search for why is Caillou bald, that's the answer you get. Oh, no! In, in yes. Google Answers, oh. which may be the funniest thing I have heard in a really oh. long time. Oh, oh my man. goodness. The internet is undefeated. <laughs> Oh, it, it certainly is. So Caillou is the worst. It is a dark night, but not the kind we talked about earlier. This is the real, what like, not we? the dark oh, night. Oh, okay. It's... Imagine it is a dark night. You are alone. It is raining outside. Oh, that's nice. Okay. You hear someone walking around outside your window. Creepy. Who do you wish was there with you? Okay. Hmm. Who do you wish was there with you? Okay. Got it. Okay. Batman. 
I, I could be there. <laughs> no, you would be Bruce Wayne, and you would be drunk. No. <laughs> so I don't want drunk Bruce Wayne. I, I still have the bat suit on. Yeah, you probably only suit. have, I can, at this point, you're just wearing the utility belt. Like he's throwing bat, <laughs> the, the, the bat knives belt at all. Only. <laughs> That's it. The utility belt between you. Wait, is this is this the whole question of just who do you want with you? The question is, the, the question is, is you're in that situation. And you could you could bear that out any way you want. You are in a uh, in a home. Yeah, you're at home, and you are alone. And then you hear something, and who do you want with you in that moment? So because there's two answers. There's someone that realistically could be there with you in your right. life right now, or and I then could, there's the hypothetical Batman, or right. Superman, or a police officer, or I'll take a sharp I, sharpshooter. Hmm. Yeah, I was right. thinking Elon Musk. That well, was who, I mean, look, not why? totally unrelated to the person outside. I think it would just be cool. Because you wanted a conversation with Elon. Yeah, that's who like, you want hey, to die with? Elon. Wait, I have to die here? You you gave me an idea with your Elon Musk theory. Because, okay, I can, I'm can. i chatting it up. I got a, a, a friend over. We're playing some board game. We're playing war mm-hmm. with the cards. Mm-hmm. But can this guy also help me out at the same time? But I also I, I get to have a cool conversation with him. It's Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> it's absolutely Mark. It's Mark Wahlberg because hey Mike, hey Mark, hey what's up? Oh man, Mark, I'm you so, hear that sound? I'm I'm so glad you could be oh. here tonight. Are you worried about that window, man? No, I, let's, say let's say how do you mother for me? Say how do you mother for me? <laughs> Should we close the window, Mark? No, man, I'm cool. I like the rain. So uh, how do you mother for me? What's, what's your take on, hey, dude, on Dungeons and Dragons? Hey, dude outside. You want to come in? Share a bite? Have a sandwich? Hey, come on in. Hey, say hi to your mother for me. Yeah, absolutely. Mark, he, Mark Wahlberg will become best Just, friends with yeah, the burglar. He will either befriend the burglar or... Or... <laughs> I'll take care of business. He, he's now, a tough dude. Hold on. Let, can, can a case be made for Adolf Hitler here? What? 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 No, what? <laughs> What just happened? Can a case... So many reasons, no. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Can a case be made that you want that person with you to be the obvious choice of the one entering the home? If I am in a situation with a home invasion, and they come in, and it's me or Hitler... They're going to kill Hitler? Yeah. Is that what you're... That's my whole angle here. Okay, so this is a... Okay, but you realize You want the worst case... No, no, no. But you realize that this person who stumbled upon a house <laughs> was like, holy crap, Andy Holloway is best friends with Adolf Hitler. I'm going to do the world a favor and I'm going to get them both. Here's... You have not been protected. Well, we will Here's be in the problem. middle of an argument about philosophy when he comes in. <laughs> I'm anti his thoughts. Uh, I'm very anti-Hitler. See, you bring Hitler inside, you got a whole new problem to worry about. And it's Hitler, okay? You just you just said, I don't want a burglar outside. I want Hitler in my house. That's so much safer. I don't got to worry about a burglar because the devil is inside my home right now. I guess you're right. You don't have to worry about that burglar anymore. Was he much of a, was he much of a fight on his own? I'm Be- pretty sure he, he was hopped up on methamphetamines. Hitler? Yes. No, he wasn't. Yes. I'm sure he was. Is that real? That is 100% real. That's how we they did even all ha- his- They had those in the 40s? Yes. When all Before all of his speeches, he would hit the pipe. Really? Yes. So he'd be this oh, is how a he good time before they you showed now up. Have a <laughs> good cr- time. <laughs> you have a cracked out Hitler in your house. Lights are off, raining outside. You are running so to just- the arms of that burglar. <laughs> so <for a laughs> Save me! me! <laughs> for a final answer here, uh, you're you're a no. A case could not be made for Hitler. No. And uh, my, Jason, you're a no. Well, correct. Okay. We're going to move on. When you are in the bathroom and someone knocks on the door, Come and knock on the door. what is the correct response to give? First of all, anytime anybody's ever done the knock, it's a very quick, someone's in here. <laughs> it's a fearful. Yeah. Someone's here. Don't Don't believe that you can enter. At this point. Right. But what is the... I mean, for what do me, you say? For me, it is... Do you just is, make a grunt? Ah! No. I mean, sometimes when you're just scared. It's like, oh! oh, oh. Now, you could probably on demand um, I let, just, them, let I, them know. I let them know with my bodily function. Like, knock, knock. No, what... what? <laughs> and I'm not joking here. My, my go-to is from Forrest Gump. Can't sit here? 
Seats taken. <laughs> That's very that's, smooth. That's what do I you do. really go to that? every time. That's every time, smooth. it's it's go, it's seats <laughs> taken. Because <laughs> my mine is more. Uh, it just the the natural innate response to it. Any type of knock. If you're behind a door, if there's knock knock, like they get a yeah. <laughs> that's just what goes so out. It's of almost me. like you're asking for more information. <laughs> yes. So the other person is going, "Oh, we're starting a conversation." <laughs> how, uh, excuse me, sir. How long do you anticipate? Before you finish? Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> I thought you were going to say, who's there? And it was a knock-knock oh, joke situation. That would have been even better. That is, now, maybe that's the correct answer. When, they, be. Knock, when, when someone knocks on the door, who's there? Be, because maybe you would let them in if they were the right person. Would Point. you rather be the person walked in on or the person oh. walking in on? Oh. I am the one who walks. <laughs> I, I would much rather be. Yeah, I, I am the one who walks. I am well the one done. who walks. <laughs> I think, um, but then you're the, technically, wouldn't that be the person at fault? Oh. In all circumstances? No, no, no. Wait, the it's person on the, on the inside is the person at fault. The locker? Oh, 100%, because if I walk in a bathroom, like I go and I oh, I rip open the door and I go in and I have to see you doing now, your- Now, what if you pick the lock? Duty. Uh, Whose fault is that? Well, then I'm going to go ahead and say <laughs> that one's on the if picker. If you pick the lock, whoops. <laughs> well, I didn't know you were in here. What are you doing? Yeah. Sir, I see a lock. Why I did must you must pick it. I am the master of lock picking. Why did you drill off the door? Why did you take the door off? I was in here. I kept telling you, seats taken. <laughs> <laughs> so just Please? getting more and more intense. Seats <laughs> taken. Seats taken. Seats taken. Please don't come in here. Someone is in here. Seats taken. Oh, the door's off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't. I couldn't no. hear you. So if you pick the lock, you're at fault. But yes. If you, if, you, if you don't, yes. if, and otherwise I, it's on I the lock. I would much rather be the one who walks in. <laughs> the one who walks. Would you rather talk like Yoda or breathe like Darth Vader? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, thank you. I, I can't handle it, man. I can't handle the people that do the Yoda joke. It's It's tired. It's worn out. I would much rather hang out with my Darth Vader asthmatic friend. And it's not just Yoda where you're talking in riddles. You also have that... Mm. <laughs> like, that's your voice now. <laughs> you have to start every sentence with... Mm. Mm. Annoying I, I mean, am. Hungry I mean, I mean how, how creepy... Single I will forever be. <laughs> how creepy is it? Yeah, can I take your order? Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're done. You're so <laughs> My order you can take. Now, what if you just got it's one of those? Over. What if you got one of those Yoda beanies, <laughs> right? To where you're wearing the Yoda cap. You have to live in Disneyland. You have no choice. You live in Disneyland. You live around <laughs> you're, Star Wars. You're there face. forever. Let me ask this question. Can I Are take there... a picture with you, Yoda? <laughs> <laughs> Pictures I will take. Are there people, you know how hardcore some Star Wars fans are, right? Like that, that, oh man, I I am quickly seeing how bad Yoda would be. He, he I haven't would be got a jailed question. within like I a week. I have not got a question out, and I'm already wanting to slap both of you. Mm. I was just going to say, do you think there are Star Wars fans mm. that, would, that would like it? They would be like, "That's this is my Yoda friend, and they would... They would <laughs> I would love being around no. you. No. For a day. For they, one day. They, they think it's cool at first. Oh, and they'd want to kill you. They'd want to kill you. I just like the grunts. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound on the other end of the knocking when they <laughs> when you're in the bathroom. Uh, she take it? <laughs> <laughs> come in here. You must not. <laughs> yeah. And then he, it's in the middle of the set. Oh, come, come in, in here. here. Oh, you said then, come in. You must not. And then the door's open and the knot comes out. Oh, so many mistakes will happen. <laughs> oh, I'm man. Death, baby. Yoda is getting walked in on in every bathroom situation. <laughs> Spitwads, with HelloFresh, you're going to get fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip trips to the grocery store and you can count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it is America's number one meal kit. The holidays, they can be hectic, they can be stressful. Let HelloFresh make things simple. 
Uh, skip the grocery stores and all of the worries. The recipes and ingredients are coming right to you so you can spend more of the festive season with family and friends. They offer 50 different menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian or calorie smart, gourmet, uh, family meals. And they offer you the flexibility to easily customize your order on the app within minutes. You could change your delivery day, your food preferences, your plan size, skip a week when you need. HelloFresh is the number one meal kit for a reason. Go to HelloFresh.com slash spitballers14. Use the code spitballers14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. Once again, for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts, go to HelloFresh.com slash spitballers14 and use our code spitballers14. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. All right, we are doing a Disney characters mock draft picture rome ancient rome we're in the coliseum and all three of us walk out and we've got four friends with us from mm-hmm. disney movies and then it someone says fight that's what we're doing i've got the beast and simba well, you guys got to go deeper uh i well i'm i look i have you can to, take the frog prince if you I want i can go the distance mike <laughs> i'm taking king triton okay Okay. Also, basically Poseidon. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I missed who Jason took. I he took, took Hercules. Hercules. Okay, yeah, and that was that was an official. Enjoy being assist. out of the water in the Colosseum. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> it's a battle royale. Out of the water. I have yeah, King Triton. Oh, I Triton. took Ariel's oh. father, and he's dead. who's basically <laughs> he can't breathe. Basically just flopping he doesn't around. Need, he doesn't he's have just gills. Flop. He's flopping around. He can breathe. I take the Little Mermaid. <laughs> That's fine. He can that, breathe. Yeah, he can breathe totally. But he's around. flopping around on the dirt. <laughs> oh yes, King Triton. <laughs> I can't, this is yeah, it's great. Freaking disaster! <laughs> I've got no hope because <laughs> I'm picturing him flopping oh, around. Oh yeah! Oh, just this freaking amazing! Oh, I can't aim my land? trident. Why is this on land? Because you put, put it in, it in a coliseum. coliseum. <laughs> you did this. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh man. Okay. If you told me one million dollars. To punch a spider? To punch a tarantula. Right. One million. No mm-hmm. joke. You would never happen. You okay. would never no, that, would Is happen. that true? That's 100%. If, a million dollars. If there's a rich person out there. Would you kick one for a million? Oh, my gosh. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. I'm crawling right now. What if I don't know if, what I if could... it's $10 million and you have to give it a smooch. Oh! <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, Mike! I did not see you going there, and that was not a fake reaction. <laughs> the best part about that is you are you are not playing that up for the show at all. He's literally that scared of He's any so spiders. Scared of them. That's that's. You- a, I want to watch that back on YouTube. I want to see what a loser I am. Here's a shameful uh, thing from my past. <laughs> this is true. You know those Hawaiian uh, oh, Hawaiian yeah. rolls, Hawaiian yeah. rolls, oh, sweet Hawaiian war- yeah. rolls. There was a night. No, all of them. No! The whole double decker <laughs> no! box. I swear no! to you. The whole entire double decker box of Hawaiian bread rolls. I had to hide the packaging. No which butter, was just down. bread? No, oh, it was. It didn't. Look, I didn't mean to do it. I just wanted one. You had to hide but the then, packaging? Be, I was so ashamed. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You gotta, you gotta elaborate on this. I wanted to set the stage. Okay. You have. You have the package. Yes. Okay. For some reason. Did you go, did you have a, like a plate? Did you put one on the plate? <laughs> oh, that would have been. That might have been limited. Okay, so, so I grabbed the package. Did you Did you ever leave the kitchen? You First thing. That was that was the first step. I grabbed the package. This is a, n- not sealed, but you know, they got a little right. tie, the tie on it, unopened. And I, for some reason, grab it and start walking upstairs. So, so you brought it with you. Yes. It had a handle. I used it. And I carried it with me upstairs, and I ate one, and I was like, oh, that's good. <laughs> so I ate another one, and then I started eating two at a time. <laughs> so just like, my are good. Wait, why did I you have to go the to top two at a sleep? time? Because it was that good. I finished you can the compre- top. You can compress those oh, real small. For sure. To, I, to deceive yourself I, into the fact that you're not eating a, an entire packet. I finished the top tray, and I went, what have I done? <laughs> and can then I about do it? 30 <laughs> seconds later, I thought I was done. But about 30 seconds later, I was like... 
my mouth needs more Hawaiian roll bread. So I think I went into my child's room. And I finished the no. second. This is like, like a. a why, did, why did you go to a different room? Because I was out where I could be seen at that moment. I was at the top of the stairs. Like, I didn't even make it to my you room. Room to hopping. A child's room to shame eat Hawaiian rolls. That is uh, All right. a moment from my past. The draft is the best ice cream flavors. Which. This is why you have the number one pick because you're <sighs> Mr. Ice Cream. And I'm thankful you both took the basics because well, I, that lets me cookie, take. That was great. Two delicious flavors. Now, that, other drafts we waver. We don't know what we're going to draft. I'm not even making a list. I'm not even looking it up. This is my, this, this is, is my your, home. I your live true here. List. My next two picks: mint chocolate chip. This is that's really weird because it's not your turn. Oh, oh, you gotta do it, Mike. You gotta do it. I Crush will take mint soul. chocolate yes. chip. Yes. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> it's the best pick that has ever been made on a Spitballers podcast. Mike, you have ruined Andy by taking his. He was so excited, mint chocolate chip. It's one of the most famous, most popular ice cream flavors. He's so excited to get it. I made a mistake, Jason. I cut him off too soon. <laughs> yes. I needed to let the whole entire monologue oh. go. And then, I had a I had a chance there, but I mean I still you still got him <laughs> you still got him good. And let me just say this to all the spitwads out there: there are you're maybe you're playing in a fantasy football league or whatever, and someone makes their pick too early. Never feel guilt for coming in and taking the guy they said they were going to take. Don't you dare let them steal <laughs> a pick early. You just come in and you say that's my guy. I am so happy. Oh, the best, Andy. The best I, part of that, Andy, for you, just so you're aware, there was <laughs> there was a a zero point zero percent chance that I would have taken that had you not been a buffoon. I was so and jumped you there, jumped your turn. <laughs> He's too ice cream excited, man. I cannot believe that just happened to He's me. Jacked up for ice cream. I want to die. I now you're taking it. away my money. <laughs> yeah, I need a one. I only get twenty billion dollars. <laughs> um, so I think. <laughs> what? Did, hold on. What did you just do? So, if you're not watching the YouTube version of the show, Jason just jumped out of his chair like he got stung by a scorpion or electrocuted. Um, then he tried to just move on like nothing happened. I, you don't get away with that. I, I, my legs were crossed, like my feet were crossed under the table, uh -huh. and I was I was moving them oh no on, and i like my knee felt like it was going out it just popped up getting all <laughs> you're sitting i need this money from the pool <laughs> so you? i can replace my knees your knee went out while sitting your knee <laughs> <laughs> it's just, i my just looking at my knee oh man what were you doing <laughs> i'm sitting down <laughs> and i moved I, my I, I moved I, my leg i tried to turn slightly to the left. I tried. I was trying to sit in a chair. And my knee, my knee went out. Reconstructive surgery on the way. How'd you tear your ACL, sir? Doctor, will I be able to sit again? Will I ever be able to sit? Oh goodness, this show is over. Will I, will I be able to sit with a lot of rehab? In reconstructive surgery, You'll you, be can, able to sit you can record a podcast once again. Today's draft is a simple one, a smelly one, because we are drafting the worst smells. Here's my favorite, my favorite thing. So when you know when I saw, okay, this is it. A lot of a lot of ideas come to mind, right? Mm -hmm. But you always want to check, like, what am I forgetting? I do a little Google search. What are some of the worst smells? And and on one of these lists. Don't worry, guys. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna draft this. But one of the known worst smells is boiled urine. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Yes. Oh, we need to dive into boiled what? urine. Why does I it would have say to we be... don't need to dive in? Why does it? Ha Who discovered Who is boiling <laughs> that it smells worse when it's boiled? Like this is such a known thing. It made a list of like like. There's someone... part of me that wants to believe if you boiled it, it would become water and you could drink it. Well, the like it would boil the urine steam. away. Well, here's the thing. Urine is, is sterile. <laughs> Not for long. But so I'm imagining that someone slipped a one ski into like a, a pot that was already on the on, on the fryer. And then someone was just like, oh, sweet. I left some water. And like 
water in here and then they turn it on. How else do you end up with boiled urine? I How don't else do you know. guys make macaroni? Would you rather regift every present you receive back to the person who gave it to you? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Or attempt to stick your finger in the mouth of every person you catch yawning. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There was a long part of my life where my wife thought it was hilarious to do that. When oh, you yawn? Yes. And she'd stick her finger yes. in your mouth? I do this Yeah, you to people, my wife. You people are monsters. I've yes, literally this. never heard anybody <laughs> doing this. Because before. you're hanging out with good company. It's the best. It is absolutely... And I say every time I go, ruined it. <laughs> That's true. You ruined it? Yeah. So you, not only do you jab them in the mouth, yes. possibly gagging this person. Well, I'm not like, I'm not trying to touch the tonsils. Ruined it. I'm just trying to <laughs> choke you to death. I uh but it's it's true. Look, this is the this is the wife show right here. No, every time that my wife yawns, she, she's getting she's getting a finger in the mouth. Does she do it back? Uh no, that would be awful. If you woke up 2,000 years from now, I don't know how you could comprehend it, right? Sure. A coma patient for 30, 40, you know, I, I, I don't know what the longest coma patient is, where they've woken up. Is it 10 years, 20 years? I have no idea. But comprehending that, I, I think you'd think you're dead. Maybe I'd Google, am I dead? Ooh. Right? Yes. And you would and not if get an answer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it just says yes. <laughs> 37 oh. years. 37 now, years? Now, 37 years, but that, is that to waking up, or was that just how long the coma lasted? Because that's the real crux here. Well, I imagine he was Wait. looking waking up and being cognizant. Right. Yeah, I looked for longest uh, or longest coma survivor. So, yeah. 37 years. Wow. Clean water for so you want all my, humans. You want my cloud machine. I don't want that, Mike. <laughs> I don't think that's yeah. going to solve the problems you think it's going to solve. If you could make or it that rain. will ever exist, even twenty one hundred years from now. Wait, Mister Techno Optimist, he is Look, not a techno. I'm not a techno you're, impossibilist. You're telling me that we'll get to the point where we can cure diseases, but a simple cloud? Let me ask you that. First of all, it's not simple, Mike. It's in the atmosphere. You're producing them for. You're saying. Producing Earth-sized weather. Yeah, I think it's a challenge. What was that? Let me movie? ask you a question, Mike. The, 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 are uh, we ever gonna make? Are we ever gonna make a boot the size of a continent? A boot? Yeah, a boot. Like Italy? Like a human boot? Are you ever gonna make a human boot? As could we ever make one as big as a continent? No. No. That's too. That's too many materials. That is a. That is not a strong argument <laughs> to win here. Your your point makes no sense. I mean, <laughs> none whatsoever. That's so. That's so much leather. Mine is just. Let talking. me ask you a question, Mike. Do you think we're ever gonna? Do you ever think we're gonna start printing people with a Hewlett Packard? Hmm. You think we're gonna do that? That's what I think of your cloud machine. <laughs> why, why would you ever have come up with me? You think they're going to make a boot the size of a continent? That's the reason. That makes no sense. Dad, my point is there are things that are outside the bounds of our possibilities. Yes, exactly. A boot and the a size boot. of a continent. That's what you want. And with. worldwide weather. Those are the only two impossibles. Oh, mercy. Two, there are only two things we can never do. Are you ever going to make a bowl of spaghetti the size of Cincinnati? No. No, they aren't. I'm a techno Who's going to eat it? Oh, man. Oh. I can't breathe. Wow. Look, there are some things that the, human, the humans can't do. Uh, they can't think. control the weather and they can't make continent-sized boots. Okay. All right, are we done talking to each uh, other yet? Next segment. All hey, right. Real quick, yeah. I, I got to redeem myself here before I, my oh. DMs fill up, but it's 27 years for someone oh. that actually woke up. Oh. oh. So that 37 year was a liar. She didn't make it. Oh, oh, oh God. God. Whoa. Al Borland. Wait, Sorry, so man. wait, 27 years and didn't wake up? No, 27, 27 did wake woke up. up. If you go 37, we're not going to talk about it. Yep. Oh. <laughs> that brought the show down. <laughs> what? <laughs> He had to it's, break it. Yeah, it's, break. it's like one of the she died. one of the funniest moments in the show's history. Yes, we're cracking guys, up. Guys, guys, I well, gotta. It's official. She I died. I she can't have kids. <laughs> 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 what was that about? Look, I, there's parts of you know. 
I don't like eating the butts of food. Do you guys know, like, do any of you have that problem? I what? don't like eating butts either, Jason. <laughs> no, no, like, I, like when you're taking a drink of anything, just leaving the last little bit. When you're eating a hot dog, do you do just that with a banana? Do you leave the last, leave little, the last bit. little bit of oh, a yes. banana? Of Everyone, course. because we're not monsters. The Wait, but you eat the top of the banana, which is the same. Wait, you eat the bottom eat of the, a banana? The little, the little, uh, not the peel. No, no the, the, the the little black piece but inside the banana. Well, no, I, uh, you eat the. Full there's no banana. way you do. There's no way. There's, this there's, is not, Borland. Andy's, this is not possible. Okay. You eat, when you get a banana, you take the. If you were to take the whole banana out of the peel, you would eat the whole thing. I do. Yeah. What? You, yeah. you eat the the the, the nasty black tip at the bottom. There's not a nasty black oh, tip. Oh yes, bottom. there is. Word. When's the last time you had a banana? Which it's the answer is never. Can't you eat them both ways? <laughs> can't no, you can't eat the <laughs> the butt of the banana. What are you, a monster? I can't oh, believe. Oh no! I couldn't wait for Borland to chime in here because I already knew his response. It should be what all human responses are, which is, well, no, that part is like, like for instance, you pick it off. For instance, I don't eat the 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 middle of a peach. The right? pit. The pit, because it's not made for consumption. <laughs> That's Apparently, ba banana butt is a vape liquid. <laughs> oh no. Kids, uh, no. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure not that, that I the, recommend that. I don't, I'm not sure that the official term of that spot of a banana is the butt, but <laughs> it makes sense, right? It's the bottom. I was intrigued that you were going all over the place, very, very general with it, so that like the bottom of your drink, that's the butt. Oh, sure, just guys, the end. The end guys, of. Oh. According to Urban Dictionary, the black tip of the banana is called the. Are you allowed to say this? No, I'm not. It's called something. Otherwise known as the little brown part at the bottom of the banana that no one in the right mind eats. That's yes, what, thank you. That's what it says, and it's the bananas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, the bananas. Yes. According to uh, Urban <laughs> oh. Dictionary, where they're asking, basically, is it even safe to eat it? I, I'm it's still safe, unaware of what gross. it is. You... Well, this is wild. Look, so, I want my like. I'll cut out if you give me a banana and it's got a bruise. I'll cut the bruise out. So I'm not then, eating any black. Then there's tip. no way you're eating. Yeah, the I bananas. don't. I don't eat the banana. It usually like, stays in the peel. Yes, usually oh, okay. it does. So there's a mysterious banana down there. Well, because what you do is you peel the banana the top to bottom. Heard. It is. You peel the banana top to bottom, but you're still holding the peel. Inside okay. the peel where okay. your fingers are is the bananas, and you don't want to touch it either, which is why you want to keep that peel on your banana. Now, what sucks now is. Instead of the, the the positive thing that comes out of the workout, he's like, six-pack washboard abs. And now, it's just, I, well, I don't have a heart attack for the next 10 years. Now, it's my <laughs> pants don't hurt when they're buttoned. <laughs> right. And I was like, I can wear pants. The benefit is just not worth it. And, you know, I don't feel like I'm about to bleed from my waist <laughs> belly button. I say, like, you know. Your waist? Wait, hold well, on, like hold belly. on, hold on. Your waist belly? Is there more than one? No. But my, I'm saying like my waistline underneath my belly button. I don't know what that's called. What's the you, center you, front of your waistline called? Your mid midsection. Well, that's a whole area. I'm talking right where that button is. What is the what is the anatomical name? <laughs> I don't your, think I don't think it's that's your a very gooch. different spot. Oh. I definitely don't think it's that, Andy. No. Uh, no. Your uh, goomba. You, sure, goomba, goomba is better. But what is your kerplunker? Is there an anatomical name? Spitwads, if, if, if you're out there, you're listening, and you're a doctor. Clearly, you are. I mean, you're all fancy and rich. Um, and exercising. By the way, if you're not, please, you're not allowed to listen to this. This is only for rich people. That's right. That's how people find this. They go, well, I've come into a lot of money now. What is the podcast you listen to, Jeeves? Um, but, but my point is, I don't know. Podcasting for the rich. I don't know. We should change our name to yeah. that. I don't know what the name of the body part right behind the button on your pants is called, but that so, is what hurts on me a lot. So you're talking this is below the belly button. Right. Do you? I can stand up. I can there's, show you this. No, I mean, there's an area. There's an area. It's called the fupa. Is that for real? Yeah. The, Did you Google this? No, I know about it's it. It's not the gooch. We're not going to. But did you Google? Oh, no, but I'm learning. <laughs> yeah, kid, kids don't Google these uh, things. All right, so <laughs> did the you say? Fupa. Yeah. We're talking about the <laughs> spare. <t> <laughs> oh goodness! My parents at home, I'm so sorry. Oh goodness! Oh, keep dokey. <laughs> oh yes. 
<laughs> um, I put in my right. Uh, you're right. That's uh, that is correct. It is the fupa. Thank you, Mike, for being a rich uh, listener. Which one, which one are you taking? Um, I'm gonna take the. I will eat whatever <laughs> I want. <laughs> I'm gonna eat it at length uh, for one hour every day, and um, you can take your exercise and calories <laughs> back. Uh, what about you, Andy? <laughs> What are you taking? I'll take the I'll take the hour of, of <laughs> hour of food. Okay, good. Uh, um, uh, Borland, it's good to know that turn, I didn't make the biggest mistake on the show today. Can you turn the air down in this room? <laughs> Got I'm it. Starting to sweat. <sighs> All right, moving on. He says after an unfortunate altercation with your local wizard, of course, <laughs> the three of you must live the rest of your days. In the ocean. Oh, Mr. Limpet situation. Those he, will be short days. He reassures you that you will be able to communicate with all other sea life. He gives you the choice to be any sea creature or animal of your liking. Okay. What are you choosing and why? So you've got to live out in the ocean forever, but you will be able to communicate and then apparently thrive. I'm being the sailfish. That You know, it's interesting what we prioritized. Now, the first thing I looked at was what sea creature has the longest lifespan by oh, default. Isn't it a turtle? Is it the turtle? Well, I what I found was a uh, a bowhead whale that is 200 plus years. And I'm thinking I'm a big old whale, so I'm resilient, right? Nobody's going to come and get me. Do you want to live 200 years as a whale? Floating in the ocean, just taking in the sights, my man. 200 <laughs> years of that? Yeah, there's a lot of ocean to see. Look, You're at, not, look at that internet. Every time Mike, I bet it'd be great. Every time Mike makes a home somewhere as a sailfish, once a predator comes along, sure he's not going to get eaten, but he has to move. I think the only predator sailfish has to worry about is man. And just because I turn into a fish, you have to worry I'm, about the Jason. I'm still the Jason will come They're and get you. They're not coming after me. They're oh, going I'm after the small. Straight after you now. <laughs> Other great whites. You will never catch me. I'm 68 miles an hour, man. Dude, a great white. I'm so powerful. I'll catch. I'll I'll eat the the bow headed whale. <laughs> I'm just coming after You've got, both of you guys. Mike. Now I don't know if it changes things, but you are locked in. Unfortunately, uh, 13 to 15 years is the lifespan of a sailfish. Ooh, what do I got? What I've do got, I got 200 years. What's the lifespan of a great white? I don't know, but they're you max- or a regular great white. <laughs> <laughs> my my cholesterol as a shark is a little high. Uh, 70 years. I'll Do you want 70 that. years as a shark or 200 as a, a bowhead? I look. I figure I got 70 as a human, so I'm good with 70 as a also, as a great white. You're only going 35 miles an hour, Jay. But the, you ain't catching me. I'm gonna sneak up. I will swim backwards and I'm, poke you in the face with my big sword. I'm nose. 100 tons. That's what I just figured out. But you're just there. Well, you're not living. Yeah. I'm not? No, you're no, not. Living. There's no L I V I N going on as a whale. No, you're just. You know what you do as a whale? You swim all the way to the north. Doesn't with, it seem and then, like. And when, then you swim just back down to the south. Listen to their voice. They're not. Oh, kill me. Kill me. <laughs> Except I'm nothing so can. Here, here's the irony of the situation because <laughs> we look up lifespans and then you wonder, you know, when, when God created these creatures. Maybe he was building in the level of enjoyment. Per- so right. the sailfish is 13, 15 years. They have a of great, unadulterated, too much enjoyment. Just so much fun. Life the, too good. The shark, it's pretty nice, like yeah. 70 years. And then the bowhead. All right, you get to live for a long time. Kill me. <laughs> too long. <laughs> I've seen all my friends I've- die. <laughs> I've seen every inch of this big blue I fell. The sailfish has been dead for 150 years. <laughs> <laughs> My best friend. You know, he doesn't do him any favors to call him a bowhead. Got, I'll be honest with you. Got eaten by a shark. <laughs> and now the shark's dead. <laughs> All my friends are gone. <laughs> and I'm here. Help me. <laughs> they call him Bowhead too. Oh, that's, that's not fun. We just we just bought a, a popcorn maker. We're we're I mean we you, are you fancy. fancy. We're we are getting bougie uh <laughs> up in our house because we're watching movies and we're yeah, making You showed me this thing and you showed me that there's some secret ingredients. Mm, flavor coat. 
Flavacol? I think that's what it's called. But yeah, it's, and it's supposed to raise profits for popcorn salesmen around the country. It's but it's in my home. Flavorco? Flavacol. Flavacol. It's worse than that. It's Flavacol. Flavacol. So that's a medication that you've seen advertised before that causes death. Well, so speaking of causes... Flavacol. Speaking of causes death, um, you know... Uh, if you're listening, the, the, don't confuse a teaspoon with a tablespoon. A tea- <laughs> n- no, no, no. A teaspoon is very, very, very yes, tiny. Yes, they're very different, Jason. If you get the very tiny teaspoon, that is 122% of your daily sodium. The teaspoon? It's delicious. Yes. Hold on, hold on. The teaspoon. The teaspoon. In the America. The little tiny. I'm going to be honest with you. You made this popcorn for me, and it was very fresh. It was very hot. You asked me if I liked it. I said I did like it, and mind you, I ate Uh-oh. it. I ate it all. He didn't like it. But listen, I ain't never tasted a saltier bag of popcorn in my whole Flavicol. life. Flavicol. <laughs> I mean, boom! Flavicol in your face. I Here's mean, the truth. It was the salt. I was, I was a salt lick. Okay. <laughs> you were a salt. I was a horse, and it was a salt lick, and I'm just, <laughs> just, just pure. I was a raisin when I got home. Yeah, I mean, baby. I was dried up by bag one. I don't know how. Flavicol. <laughs> So, um, here's the thing that I have since learned. We have these packages where you cut the top off and it's got the oil yeah. and it's got the... the kernels. What, the kernels. I was like, the seeds. You're such a professional. <laughs> and, and it's got a pouch of seasoning salt. And so I don't think I'm supposed to use that and the flavor call. No, I... And that the flavor too call. Much, too much in your face. Um, All right. So, but, look, but something stuck guess, in your teeth, it stinks. If it's stuck in your shoe, I've got, oh, you know, my thing with the shoe. You know, you're you, doing the you toe work, tap you all work, day. You work, the, you work it towards the top left. Yeah. You step. The big toe. Step, toe down. Click, click, click. Step, step. Click, click, click. Trying to trying to kick the toe to the front. I don't know why as a or kid. Or the, the rock. I feel like as a kid toe. I had, like, uh, a rock in my shoe every day. That's just what you, I don't know if we played in a lot of miniature rock Playgrounds, I I just feel Arizona. like it was, it was regular. Yeah, Arizona. No grass, right? You just don't get grass you know, in your... No, you didn't play in the rocks. You played in the grass. Yeah. That's how you got rocks in your shoes. <laughs> That's yeah, right. That's true. But uh, something stuck in your... I feel like you might get used to it stuck in your teeth, oh, wouldn't my. you? Yes. No, this no. Is, this is the no, point of why never. I brought up the popcorn machine. The, I brought up Flavicol. the popcorn machine because... <laughs> Flavicol. Because... WMD. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> because... I've eaten a lot of popcorn the so last salty, two weeks. salty, Mike. Dehydrated. Did you, did you have any of that no, popcorn? I missed out. I'm telling you, it is, was, is delicious. Sodium rich. <laughs> but it is very sodium rich. And uh, I apologize for nothing. Did you look at the ingredients? Flavicol. Does it just say ingredients? Salt. Oh, salt is nowhere near as rich in sodium as Flavicol. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like, I'm not joking. We, if you took a teaspoon of salt. They made saltier salt. They made saltier salt. <laughs> if you take a teaspoon of salt, there's no fathomable <laughs> way that Boom. it has the same... <laughs> Flavicol. Flavicol. Boom. Saltier your, than salt. Up your profits. Saltier than salt. That's a good slogan. Harness good the slogan. ocean. I might draft that today. You ever did the allergy testing? Yes. I, they, no. Oh. Do you know what I'm talking about, Jason? No, of course. I know what you're talking Have about. Have you ever been tortured? But I'm... You, you, <laughs> for science. You inferior humans with your allergies. <laughs> yeah. Well, having, believe it or not, anybody can get the test. You don't even have to have allergies. Yeah, but why would you? Like, Good point. I'm not allergic to anything. Well, you want to scratch my back and but, put a bunch of chemicals on but me? But they basically just poke a bunch of holes in your back, teeny little marks, and then they put like a little, you know, a little bit of everything, a plant or what? I don't know how they put it. cats. They yeah, rub a yeah. cat on your back. But, <laughs> but then they can't, you can't, you're not allowed to scratch it. And I just remember like as a kid getting that done and my mom would like, you could Use a magazine to like waft air to try to make those itches go away, Does but that, that would be help. I feel like that would make it more anything, intensified. Anything but sitting in it makes it better. <laughs> like if you are itchy right now, you are better off running around than you are standing there itchy. Sure. To distract you. I can't believe that's how we figure things out. Do do we still do that? Yeah. Oh yeah. The scratch test is still. Yeah. Li- and then they haven't improved upon that. Then they put the leeches on. You know, you bring up a good We've point. We've been to the moon. Yeah. You bring up a good point. Well, like, like, hey, hey, child, here's what we're going to do. Poke, 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 Lay poke, poke, still poke, while poke. I poke you 40 times, and then I'm gonna, just going to pour liquid that you're allergic it's to. It's like when I was first 
learning math and uh, you know the trial and error process was just like i'll find the answer by getting it wrong a hundred times yeah until it works i don't understand how to do this equation but i'll just keep t like uh no it's not that right <laughs> it's not that there's got to be a better way like take, it is take a vial of my blood go test it tell me what i'm allergic to as opposed to well let's try this let's <laughs> Let's see, let's see if you're allergic to cactus. Give me a cactus. I mean, that's what it feels like. Like, like I can, gonna, you can do this test that's at That's actually home. exactly what the allergists sound like. You that's can, the weird thing. You can do this test hey, at home. Hey, partner, we're going to get this figured out. You don't need a pulmonologist. They want to hunt you rabbits. Just, like, uh, is he allergic to cats? Well, yeah, I got a cat. <laughs> Come here, Jehoshaphat. And then he just rubs your cat all over, and you say, give it 15 now, seconds. Now, tell me. <laughs> When I poke you with this needle, does it hurt? You are not allergic to hypodermic needles. <laughs> hey, this this one's sharp. Nail do this one sharp. Why are we all Yosemite Sam? I don't know. Get Josephat in here. Yeah, let's see if let's see how you react to poison. Oh, turns out you're allergic to poison. You should get that checked. You should get that checked. Oh, that, yeah, you that'll got be, another one allergic to poison. That'll be fifty dollars. <laughs> you never believe this. 100% of people allergic to poison. I'm getting fat so, so far, we keep testing. Everybody says, I don't have allergies. I say, take this poison. <laughs> you allergic to poison? You sure are. All right, I hope you enjoyed some of our... <laughs> oh, oh, Mike enjoyed some of that our favorite part, moments. That one part was great. <laughs> that was my favorite part, too. Just like yours at home. <laughs> So let's go ahead and get into a brand new draft for episode 100. How's your sleep been? Has it been awesome? Mine has been awesome. My sleep has been awesome because I sleep on a Helix Sleep mattress. I absolutely love it. Look, I'm a hefty boy. I'm a big boy. And when I took the Helix Sleep quiz, I said, you know, my, my height, my weight, my sleeping patterns, you know, do I sleep on my back? On my front, on my side, do I move around? And they found the perfect mattress for me. Mike, I know you got a different mattress. I did. Because you're a different person. Yes. It's, it's not just take the quiz and everyone gets the same mattress. No. no there's, there are different mattresses to match you to, so that you will get the best night's sleep. Yeah. Everybody's unique. Helix knows that. There is a reason that Helix has won the mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. Um, I fully endorse Helix Sleep mattresses. They are great. Just go to helixsleep.com slash ballers. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they will match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up if you don't love it, but you will. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment pa plans, so get a great night's sleep. It's not that far away, and they're offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash ballers. That's helixsleep.com slash ballers for up to $200 off and two free pillows. <laughs> The Spitballers Draft. All right. We're calling it Honey, I Shrunk the Draft. Why? Uh, because. Because this is what we do. Here's the scenario, guys. Jason, Mike, and myself, we've been shrunk down to only six inches tall. Mm. And we've been asked a very important question, and that is we, are, <laughs> we need to draft <laughs> household items for a battle to the death. So we're oh, doing yeah. a battle royale, but we're six inches tall. Oh, gosh. And these are only items that you could pick up if you were six inches tall. We've all been shrunk down. We're in a house. And we're going to fight. Oh, we're always going to fight. I mean, there's yeah. one thing we know is that when the three of us are together, it's a it's a battle to our death. It's but now a battle it's, royale. Uh, honey, I shrunk the draft, and we're six inches tall, <laughs> which really takes a lot of... A lot of the things that in my life, you know, when I usually look at an object, I think, how do I weaponize this? And I if I were not, only six inches tall. Well, but that's the issue. I haven't oh. really spent a lot of time thinking, how do I weaponize this if I were six inches tall? <laughs> mm. Makes things more difficult. We still, just, just to be clear, we still haven't thought about that a lot <laughs> that as is of 100%. right this moment. And, and I think people will find the, the truth of that out here in just the next <laughs> few minutes. So we'll see. Now, unfortunately, I have the first pick. Is this correct? Oh, you, the clear one-on-one's out there. The, 
Oh man, the clear one on one. Yeah, don't mess it up. I didn't That's... know there was a spear out there. Um, yeah, there's a super clear one on one, right, Mike? Yeah. Uh, all right, Damn. look, pressure is on you to not blow it. The clear one on one is always, whether it's survival or whether it's uh, weaponry, is a spear. That was the best invention <laughs> of mankind. Okay, and so I, I think, I think something like a steak knife is going to be too heavy. I'm six inches yes. tall. But I can absolutely pick up that sharpened pencil, and you ain't mm. gonna get near me when okay. I've got a, a, a. I mean, it's just it's a spear, <laughs> like literally. Yeah, that's a spear. It I is? have a weapon with my sharpened number two pencil, and I'm gonna <laughs> put ink in you. Is that what ink? happened to number no, one lead. pencils? Number like, one, that must have given lead poisoning. They threw that out. Yeah, right away. <laughs> right like, right off the block. Does Get anyone know one. the answer of like number one and number two pencils? It no. also number seems, three? No, I was going to say, it also seems that they perfected they it on the second try. <laughs> we like, did it. We try, did it. <laughs> try one sucked. Try two was... And now Mother it's like, of mercy. <laughs> it's look so at this. It's funny when you, know, you go perfect. shopping as a parent and you get the list, must be number two pencils. And it's like... What, what else other are you pencils gonna buy? can I possibly buy? <laughs> like, oh. just say pencils, because there's I, I don't know how to not buy a number two. Are there pencil specialty stores out there with the whole variety? Oh, one man. through seven? The, yeah, the antique stores. They have the number oh, ones. The number ones. <laughs> well, I've it's got just, a number two. They just manufactured it with erasers on both ends. <laughs> oh, we screwed this <laughs> oh, thing that's, up. That's never there's right. no way to write. There's no, uh, we should put a point over here. <laughs> Or maybe oh. number two just actually, there's like, maybe that's the first one that added the eraser. So oh. it's really just Ooh. like, oh man, this can do t two things. <laughs> Let's call it number oh, two. Number two is four. <laughs> All right. I've got my pencil, my spear, my one on one. All right. It's now, on lockdown. I, uh, I feel now, like I already won the draft right there. It's my pick, right? Now? That's sure. Correct. Okay. Well, it's ironic because like one of the first things I wrote down was a steak knife, but now you yeah. guys are telling me, you're telling me it's too heavy that's for way me too to pick heavy. up. Yeah. Even with them worried. cheapy Walmart steak knives, those things are made of nothing. I was worried about taking my pencil, which I wanted, because I was like, someone's going to try to take a steak knife, but I feel like that shouldn't apply. So I no. used my platform while on the clock to Just basically to draft two away. things. It was, it was sneaky. But if you had a steak knife, you would be like Cloud in Final Fantasy. Like <laughs> yes. you, you would have the world's largest broadsword. It's just it's not happening. I mean, I six mean, inches, though, that you're pretty big there, right? Yeah, yeah, but, but that's how big is a steak knife? The steak knife is probably at least six inches. So I, I'm curious if our manliest man, Al Borland, thinks I could lift a steak knife at six six inches tall. I don't think so, man. It, <laughs> 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 I Just appreciate tell the, the fact truth. that He's you wanted emphatic. me to succeed there, but you're like, no, I Dude, just don't I, think so. I just <laughs> don't see it happening. Maybe right. Jason, but not you, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go then with uh, what I think... I'll, I'll lack the kind of size of a number two pencil here, but mm. I think I will be deft and agile with my toothpick. So mm, I, I will select it. a toothpick. I, I, it's it's on I my of, list. When I okay. thought of toothpick, I was like, well, Andy will get this for sure. Yeah. You're, you are the toothpick king. Not strong enough for a steak knife, I guess. <laughs> Al told me. So I'm going to go with a toothpick. Mm, it's, it's nicely done. Uh, that leaves me two picks that I was hoping I would get okay. because my list is not very large. Uh, but number <laughs> but, one, look, I mean, it's sometimes you got to have a smaller weapon. So I will take a thumbtack mm -hmm. or a push pin because now I've got my dagger of swords. It's not really, I mean, it's not really a dagger when you're six inches tall. It's yeah, more, it, it's a little bigger well, than, it's bigger than a dagger would be. I don't, well, I don't think so. I think it's daggerish. Yeah, thank you, Jason. I appreciate your a support on here. A toothpick would be like a I sword. guess you're right. No, I guess you're right. It's pretty small. Yeah, but I, uh, I, re I retract that. So I will take uh, now. I will take my sword, which oh no, I don't know why you would take a toothpick when I, there is a oh, better no. version. I'll take the paper clip. Yes. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, that's fantastic. Great pick, Mike. <laughs> I think that's Jason's way of saying you did not select the pick you wanted. That's that, yeah, correct. that is true. That is true. So you're but, taking a paper clip now. How? When I think Good of luck swords, opening when, that up. when I think of swords, I don't think of paper clips. Ironically, so I'm curious how you made that comparison. Because he it's, thinks that he can unfurl the paper clip. You can 100 percent unfurl the paper. Well, I clip. can because I'm six feet tall. No, <laughs> as, it, as, 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 no, you'll be able to do it. It won't be. Al, it Al, won't be a walk in the park, but you'd be able to do it. <laughs> 
you'll be we'll be whooping up on you while you're Either pulling way. profusely on the edge of this paper clip. Yeah, while you do you're that, not you're getting it a pencil off. through your heart. No, I'm not trying to break it off. Al, can he can he pull that paper clip open? Yeah, I think so. But he'll have Thank to you. stand Classic on one Mike side of it while, while trying to. Yeah, like well, I that's said, uh, not, not the easiest, but I'll get it done. Right, Al, could Andy pull that paper clip off? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, I got to work out. All right. So, Mike, you have a paper clip. You have a thumbtack. I have a toothpick. I, I'm not. I thought about a thumbtack. I'm fine with my toothpick. I got more range. I got you, more range. You do. You also it will wear out very fast. I may give myself a splinter. That, that <laughs> no. could be a problem. That's true. Uh, Jason has a uh, number two pencil. Mm-hmm. Now, most of what I know about being six inches tall comes from the movie Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Am I allowed to draft an ant that I can ride? <laughs> oh, man. No. I say, I, I say, sure, let that ant murder you. <laughs> well, I'm saddled How up. If it... you've watched that movie, Auntie was a good friend. That's you better what they draft Oreos. That, well, yeah, I guess you have to hold it out in front of the ant. You're so six I'm inches not... tall, so that ant is still like the size of your foot. That's a strong oh, point. I'm a little bit it. bigger. That's why I asked the question and did not make the pick. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going with a beard trimmer. I'm running at you with a beard trimmer. <laughs> a beard trimmer? Yeah. Oh, you are beard? riding that beard trimmer nowhere. <laughs> yes, you are. The beard, a beard trimmer is even heavier than a steak knife. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You just drafted like a, a boulder to stand on. Man, yeah, I must I just not wanted, know what, I wanted I must not know what six inches is. I really don't think I know my height. Six inches. Imagine, imagine a beard trimmer. Yeah, that's about six inches. <laughs> <You're> so, <laughs> oh, so no. that means you just Hold drafted on. a gigantic version of yourself. A mini beard trimmer. <laughs> what? What mini beard trimmer exists? <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm not. You're saying that it's more. This is more like fortification of right. my hideout. You just yes. drafted. I'm not a, running at you with it, but if you come at me, you, you can know, hide this behind is, it. I, I can, hey, you can aim, do it, like, I could probably point it at you. Oh, for sure. And you could turn it on. Like, I oh, no, what on. if I run into his beard trimmer? <laughs> this know? reminds me a lot of me drafting that lawnmower in the Home Depot. Yes, yeah, it's just That's like going that. one mile an hour. Dang it. All right. Uh, well, okay, so here's the truth. When Andy drafted a toothpick, I was so excited. Because you need a sword. Where I got mm -hmm. a spear, you need a sword. And a toothpick is undoubtedly a sword for oh, this. Oh, no, I know what But he's got a little of. wooden sword. You, Mike, oh, drafted a metal no. sword that hopefully you can turn into a sword after a while. I'm just drafting <sighs> a sword. Give me the sewing needle yeah. that is a metal version of a toothpick. Mm. Yeah, he wins <laughs> we'll on just... that one. Uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's I very, mean, very smart. That was my first. That was my one-on-one, -on -one, but I thought there was a chance because you two aren't around sewing as much as I am. My yes. living room is currently a, uh, what do they call, a, a, I guess, a sewing room. Um, <laughs> like it's, there's this room, they do a bunch, a bunch of sewing, a sewing in it. What do they call that? Uh, what is, where, where do seamstresses work? In this, I uh, guess a sweatshop, that's what they call yes. it. So my living room is a sweatshop, <laughs> teaching our children how to do hard labor. Is that um, a conservatory? All right, so I've, oh. got, I've got another... <laughs> I've got another <laughs> pick here, and oh, so I've thanks, got Mike. my I've got my spear, I've got my sword. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have your pencil and sewing needle. Go on. And now I'm gonna take a whip, but imagine that this whip was harsher than leather. What if Ooh. I had a nice necklace that I, you know, a thin band? I'm I'm swinging that thing around. Oh, that's like a. Uh like a ball and chain. What are they? Exactly. What is that thing called? A ball and chain, I believe, is what that's no, called. I think there's a more formal name. If it's got the spikes no, wait, if in you've it, got a necklace, isn't that a lot to handle at six inches tall? The, the, I'm, I'm just talking the band, just a thin bit. This isn't some crazy. Can you like, whip that band around? Oh, you probably absolutely. could. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's really. Light. I want to be very clear about something. I have no concept <laughs> of what six inches tall is or what people can lift at six inches tall. I am terrified that my next pick. Will be the heaviest object on the earth. I will take like a, a full size bowling pound ball. Pound dumbbell. Yeah, I got no clue what to pick. <laughs> I told you guys before we started. Like I'm concerned. You have a number I'm, of I'm sharp. On fire here. You have a number yeah. of sharp objects that You're I am concerned well, about because 
at the end of the day, I've got a beard trimmer. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go with, I'm going to go with a bottle cap shield. I'm going Captain oh, America size okay. bottle cap shield. Okay. Self-defense mm. at this point is my only option. Try to survive until both of you are tired and I can, and fall into my beard trimmer. That's, so <laughs> so you, that's you can actually use at. that shield to try to corral us in push us into yes. the beard trimmer. you turn the beard trimmer on yeah. and then you go and then it's like oh you cut my hair now let me check something real quick <laughs> al do you think that i could push these gentlemen into a beard trimmer sure oh, that right. was the nicest thing he's oh, ever said to you i expected i don't it's think possible. so man yeah all right mike i i'll tell you this i also don't want to pick a fourth pick because i don't have one it's go still on. it's still two picks from me and i the the pick i want i know is coming back I'm 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 so excited. Apparently, you're a professional at this part, Jason. Have you ever <laughs> been shrunk before? Uh, I have done the opposite before. Um, I've put on the weight <laughs> I've and done, expanded. So I've, I've, I've done the, the opposite. I've, I've been grown. I've been grown. I've seen some things at this size. Oh no! I have a great last pick, Mike. Don't take it. Oh, uh, you get ready because I'm about <laughs> about to ruin your dreams. Oh. All right. Um. I'm not quite sure what I will do with it yet, but it's on my <laughs> list. <laughs> like you're, you're fighting to the death. You've, you've yeah, gotta... I feel like I've got. I feel like I could do something with this. I could figure it out. So I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take some yarn. Mm. <laughs> gonna take some yarn here. Look, I, maybe I can make a lasso. You never maybe. know. Yeah, I, like, is a lasso one of the go-to things? Like, if as grown-up human, if you were in a fight, is a lasso on the upper? echelon of the list i uh, it's when you're a six inch person it is okay i, I know that much for sure and All right. oh man and then i <laughs> i'm with oh, man, the, i thought of another great one you are you shut up uh, <laughs> uh i'm with andy that most of what i've learned about being that small comes from honey i shrunk the kids the documentary so, yes the, 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 yes and i know that there was they they ran into this in the in the movie and they were all like concerned about it. I, I'm going to take some projectiles. It, it's I know it's it's harmful. It could be covered in disease. So I will take bug turds. Ooh, <laughs> bug it's, turds. It's it's the long play. <laughs> I will get you with the cockroach poop. Oh, and you it's will... great because I would pick <laughs> you to be handling bug turds. I've got yarn. It... <laughs> I can just I can tie Ooh. up. I've got a slingshot, bro. Not a slingshot, but a, I've got a sling. <laughs> I'm going to be looking like David. I just, just want to be just clear. You drafted bug turds. bug turds on purpose. So that's... Yes, we did All right, what's, what's your fourth pick over there, Smarty Pants? Well, look, I have a good fourth pick. I really do. I know that I haven't been able to figure out what I can carry at this height. So I'm shrinking down, and I'm going with basically a trident, which is a cocktail fork. Ooh, I'm going with the cocktail that's fork. That's pretty good. Okay. That's yeah, good. that's going to be that's my try. The whole fork and knife too heavy thing. Yeah. You just said, give me a smaller version of that. That's, that's right. <laughs> that's great. Genius. I Wait, I is it too late for me to draft a mini chainsaw? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have your four picks, Mike. Would have been great. I yeah. select a mini chainsaw. <laughs> um, all right. Let me all right hear, I got my last you, pick. You have so many good ones, Jason. This is going to be do. hard for you to pick. Um, I was going to take... Uh, until I thought of an even better thing. The thing that I thought was going to come back to me were the corn on the cob holders. You oh, know those, those, are, those, are, those dude, little oh, things. Oh, you get both. Yeah. I get, you get I, them both. Yeah, you talk about daggers. I go, wah, wah, wah. Yeah, and you're looking like if, Wolverine. What yeah, are those it, called? If those were too hot. Corn on the cob holders? Fine. I think corn on the cob holders. There's, yeah. I don't know. It's like a ball and chain. It's called a ball, ball and chain. chain. <laughs> so what are you actually going with? Then? The ball and chain I, is called a chain mace. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Jeremy. Also, you're called welcome, a ball and chain. Owl, if it's got if it spikes on it, it's a flail. Yeah, but it's also known as a ball and chain. Um, but a ball and chain is that's how you like you put it on old timey prisoners. It's not that's a that's called weapon. a wife. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no ball and chain. <laughs> oh. Uh, no, my last one <laughs> is <laughs> you guys have seen. Uh, Star Honey, Trek, the kids, yes, I presume Star we've Trek. seen Star Trek. And yeah, heard of you, it. And the Klingons, they have that big, crazy, two-handed, like, weapon. You know what I'm talking about? Because uh, that's what I'm about to draft here with my okay. razor blade. I'm a straight-up razor blade. Oh, you're blade. grabbing that middle I'm of the blade? I'm grabbing it in the middle, and you guys are so screwed. No. I can use it as a shield. I can just... Oh, you guys are... 
I mean, you this is are, a massacre. You, you, the massacre is you trying to figure out how you could use a razor blade as a weapon without lopping your arm off. <laughs> Easily. The, the <laughs> no. middle holes are perfect. Okay. You need I, to look up Klingon weapons and you'll see what I'm talking about. I was, <laughs> did you, you, but you drafted a razor blade. Yeah, you're darn right I did. And I don't even need it. I, and, all I need is a spear and I got that with the first pick. We aren't boars, Jason. We're human beings. Okay, now that's a if solid I've point. I've said it once. I've said it a thousand times. We aren't boars, Jason. But everybody knows the best way to kill a boar uh, is a number well, two pencil. Well, if you've listened to this show, you know. So Mike has. Uh, I misread it when I was looking it over. He has a thumbtack. He's got a paperclip. He's got some yarn. And then I read big turds, but it's bug turds. He's got bug turds. I believe I have both. Thank you. <laughs> I guess you do. I have a toothpick. A a beard trimmer of debatable weight, bottle cap shield, a cocktail fork. Jason has a number two pencil, a sewing needle, a necklace, which I still think might be too heavy, a razor blade, finishing <clears throat> it off. And Jason is busy slacking us pictures of Klingon weapons yeah. and thinking that he has fashioned a, a similar item, which it kind of does look similar. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be, uh, I'm, I'm holding that I'm All holding right. right on the inside. So we are battling. We are six inches tall, and the spitwads can decide who wins this very scientific battle. What did we learn today? Oh, I, it is easy. Yeah, it's easy for me, too. I learned that I don't know what a six-inch <laughs> tall person can lift or yeah. do. Uh, don't draft uh, ways to fight as a six-inch tall person. And the, I learned that if we were all shrunk to six inches, I will murder you fools. <laughs> I will straight up just decapitate you while you're looking around for something without any creativity. I'm no. pretty happy with my draft. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it my two thumbs up so I can get some votes. I'm I had uh, also on my list. I had GI oh, yeah, Joe what else weapons. Did we have GI Joe weapons, but I wasn't mm. sure what I could actually. Pew, pew. I mean, not I'm not, not, a, not a pretend plastic gun, but oh, like okay. someone had to have like. Doesn't Snake Eyes have swords? Yeah, I mean, at yeah, least those be a are, hard I mean, plastic, plastic sword. Yeah, tweezers yeah. was on my list. That would Ooh, have been great. Right, that's pretty metal. solid. It's like having two spears. I had a original plan of a drain cap, a drain plug as my shield, but I got too concerned. You would say I could not lift that, so I went with bottle cap. I had quarter on my list for to be a shield but then no it would just be copying the, so. can, the one can i lift I, scissors can i lift some scissors no what no, about like not. kid scissors sewing scissors you can tiff has these little tiny oh, sewing those scissors little ones? that are so sharp they are the they sharp, head, little, hedge clippers as a six yeah that's basically person. Like hedge clippers the size person. of you though it's not you aren't holding those things out you're like your shoulders are not strong enough for that no, those the scissors that she has, they're like two and a half, maybe Jason's three inches. Jason's sewing knowledge has helped him tremendously it in this draft. It is a huge benefit. Um, I also, I wanted to draft... I, this one probably is too heavy, but I wanted to draft a mouse because, the, because of the whole ball and chain thing. Like, you swing the cord around. If you can get that thing oh, going... Oh, that's way too heavy. Yeah, it's too heavy. Oh, I didn't computer draft. mouse. I was way off <laughs> mentally. <laughs> he, no, he wanted the mouse to ride. That's what yes. I thought. And then eventually poop, and I would also have poop. <laughs> Because poop is the winner. All right. I think we're done. Episode 100 in the books. Well, that was fun. Yeah. Oof. Remember it was, Jason scat at the beginning of this episode? It was <laughs> so good. He drafted poop right then. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Spitballers podcast. To see what other nonsense the guys are up to, check out spitballerspod.com. 